Okay. So as I said uh, some uh, minutes before during the presentations, I will try to um, give you some skills about programming in Python. So um, ah, you can interrupt me when you want during the sessions. Don't hesitate if you need, if you have questions, something like that. It's not a problem. Um, my first name is Jean Baptiste. It is a composed name, I know. <laughs> it is not very frequent for you, but uh, okay. You can call me Jean, you can call me Baptiste, you can call me Jimmy, as you want. Okay. Um, So um, I will be very pragmatic. I will show you how to program, use Python. I will not uh, present you Python in a formal way. So it's not, uh, this is not a language intended for. You have to be very pragmatic with Python. You have to try, exercise yourself. Have a look on internet, how to make some different things, etc. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe I can ask you if some of you already program in some language or not. I don't know. So maybe you can put your hand on if uh, if you already program in some in some language. Is it? The case for somebody here or not? Nobody ever wrote. Ah, okay. Yeah, two. Okay. So we will begin with, with a very, very basic things about the programming. You will, uh, you will see that uh, I will use terms that are common with mathematics. But uh, they are not exactly the same objects. We call them but functions, variables, but uh, computer uh, variables are not exactly the same as mathematical variables. And functions are exactly, not exactly the same uh, concept. So, but of course, in the in the in the mind, this, they are very related. There is a lot of difference. You're, so you have to be very careful. Um, as you may know, um, computers like, uh, are made. Uh, sorry. Uh, have been designed uh, to manipulate numbers. And everything that you that you make with computers is about numbers. So you, behind this, there is an idea, the idea of coding, and that is very important. Everything you make with a computer is encoded in some in some way. So we will see that uh, it may give some. It may lead to some problems during programming, but okay. So what is uh, Python? Okay, maybe we can start. Python is a programming language. Okay. Let me let me set up something. If you if you have your own computer, I hope that you that you install the right uh, a good version of uh, Python. There's different versions, and the, what is very important here is that we install at least the uh, version at least three. Do not use Python uh, two or something like that. It's uh, it's in some way a different language, so we we, we will add a, a lot of problem if you use uh, Python two. Okay. Uh, now I am using the uh, command line, so. It's a way to interact with computers. 
you can interact with computers with your mouse, you know that, I hope. Shaking on the icons or things like that. But um, just to uh, show you the basic thing, I will use the command line. So I will interact with my computer uh, with the keyboard. It's a text mode uh, interactive session. Okay, so uh, <coughs> I launched the Python. Python can be used to uh, make programs that you go to the file and then you can run when you want, but uh, you can use it in a very interactive mode. You can ask me as, as the Python interpreter to calculate something, give you the reason, and then you can ask me to calculate something else. Okay. So this is the interactive mode. You see, I run Python, and then he said, okay, I'm Python 3.9, etc. It is not the last version of Python, but it is a, a recent one. Okay. It's sufficiently recent one. And then he, uh, he sent me something which is called a prompt. Then he uh, invites me to say something to him. We try to understand what I type. And uh, give me an answer. So, okay, I can type anything. Okay, then read them. And after this, give me some answer. Of course, I, uh, I type uh, anything understandable for Python. So, he, he, he said, basically, he said to me, okay, it's an error, but okay. Oh, what I can do uh, with uh, the interactive mode? Very basic thing, like uh, calculating, computing. Uh, some uh, arithmetic expression. Okay. So a very basic one is I type three. Very, nothing very surprising about this. Three for me is a number, but remember that for the computer, it is not the number actually. I type a character, then it is decoded uh, uh, with the Python interpreter. You can understand that it is the representation of a uh, base 10 number. Okay, you understand that it is free. And he gives me the answer. Okay, I understand it is free. And then he encoded into a character representation. Okay. Oh, well, I can do some more things, more very basic things. Okay. Three plus four. And the answer is seven, of course. As you may know. Okay. What the computer is doing here, here is not uh, trivial. Uh, he has to decode this string. We call a string just a sequence of character. This is a common term in, in, uh, in the computer programming. We say that a sequence of character is a string. Okay. So he decode this string that I input. And it is not a trivial task, but he was able to understand that there is three main substring interesting substring, one that does represent the number three in base 10, one that represents a no operator, an arithmetic operator, and the <clears throat> another part that is that represents the base 10 number. Then he understand all of these, take the sum and give me the representation. Okay. I already zoomed, but maybe I maybe I have to zoom more. Okay. Is it okay for you? Okay. Of course, I can make any computation I want. You can understand. <clears throat> Um, when you write uh, such an uh, expression, it is very natural for us to write something like, like this. We learn this basic arithmetic uh, very early. Um, but that uh, to multiply, we use the star. 
there is no cross to uh, to to denote the multiplication operator. It is a star, so it means uh, three hundred thirty-four plus uh, four hundred forty-five multiplied by six. Okay, and of course you have um, standard priority for operators. Okay, everybody know, already knows that this is computed before the addition. Okay, of course you can use a parenthesis if you need. Okay, something like this is correct. Uh, if you input something that is is not correct, um, okay, something like that it does not it does not represent either. Um, correct um, arithmetic expression then you have an error message it depends on the what is the exact error but okay this one says that it is a invalid syntax okay there is a, a valid syntax for uh, python expressions we will see a different kind of uh, uh, valid expression Okay, so uh, what kind of operators do you have? Of course, you have plus, multi multiply. You can divide, okay, with the <coughs> with the slash operator four over five, and it gives you uh, zero dot eight as a result. Okay, but um, be careful because. There is very, 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 very strange things that happens here. Okay. Uh, from the beginning, I entered only natural numbers. At least I thought that it was that there was natural numbers. Okay, when I input three or, or thirty-two. Okay, but. Uh, you should know that for computers, any expression is associated, associated with a type. And there is different kinds of types for expressions. It is the same as the set of numbers. You know that complex numbers are not natural numbers, real numbers are not natural numbers, etc. It is almost the same for computers. Okay. When I input some literals, like uh, 32 is a literal number, it's a number, okay? You should know that this literal may represent a value for a given type. So which type uh, is uh, 32? If I type 32, it is just a natural number, which is called in computer. Uh, in computer programming, integers. Okay, this number is an integer. Okay, if I type something like 32.5, this is not an integer. This is a floating number, floating point number. Okay, and they are not the same. Okay, even if I type 32 dot, it is not 32. 42 dot is 32 as a floating point number. Okay. So when I type, uh, say, 4 over 5, something strange happens because 4 is an integer, 5 is an integer. But when I divide both, both those numbers, integral numbers, I get a floating point number as the re result. Why? This is because the nat nature of this operator is to uh, divide any numbers, any pair of numbers, and give you the result as a floating point number. OK? <laughs> Every operator or functions applies 
uh, from um, types to types, as when you define a domain from function, when you type function in mathematics, you say, okay, this function is defined over integers to uh, real numbers or something like that, I don't know, okay? This is the same for all operators of function in a programming language. It takes values from types and give you a result in possibly over types. So it is the case for this operator. It takes numbers, whatever number you give, integers, floating point numbers, and it makes the divisions as all these numbers were floating numbers. It converts the integers to floating numbers, which is always possible. But be careful also because when you when you use floating point numbers, it's you must know that it is just an approximation of real numbers. You cannot represent real numbers in computers. You just have approximation of them. Okay. So you cannot make exact computation with floating point numbers. You have roundings and such problems. It is a very difficult task. But uh, okay. For basic computation, it is not a problem. Of course, if, if you have to launch a rocket on the moon, it will be much more difficult to, to address these problems. Okay. Um, so this operator uh, slash is uh, gives result into the floating uh, point numbers. If I want to make an integral division, it is always possible, but it is the operator double slash. Okay, say I divide. Okay, oh, okay, five divided by five, uh, four divided by five, but with this operator gives you an integral division. Okay. So of course it is zero. If I use if I use four uh, slash three, it is the um, floating point uh, division. And if I use four double slash three, it is integral division. It it answers one. Okay. So four with fifteen slash three. Fifteen slash three. Fifteen slash three. Okay, fifteen. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, so this is the uh, integral division. Okay. Um. Oh, of course, you have the minus operator. It works well with numbers. No, no problem. And um, uh, you can have the reminder uh, of uh, integral division. Uh, for example, if you use percent, okay, percent is the um, denotation for um, reminder of the integral division, okay. Oh, if I use up, okay, okay. So you have common operators like this. You also have exponentiation uh, operator. You can uh, compute, or maybe I can zoom again. It will be much more easier for everybody. Okay, if you use this double star is the exponentiation operator. Okay. This denotes two power three. Okay. Of course, you can use it with uh, different kinds of numbers. It works well.
So um, this is a very basic introduction of expression. Of course, you can have uh, some more complex expression. We will see what we can do uh, a, lit a little bit uh, later. If you need uh, some uh, more complex uh, function, say I want to compute uh, the cosinus of something, uh, some value, or can I use it? Okay, if I try something like that, okay, see, it doesn't work. That doesn't mean that the, this function doesn't exist, okay? It does, it does just mean that I didn't claim that I want to use it. Of course, if I need to learn something, what I, what I can do, the common way to do this is to go to a library and ask for a book that contains what I need. Okay? This is almost the same in computer languages, programming languages. What you have to use to, what you can use is a kind of library that you can ask to add to your uh, basic environment and use it, okay? So some other people may have built bricks, package these bricks, computing bricks uh, into libraries, and then you just have to ask to use those libraries. Okay, there is a lot of libraries in Python. You can write your own libraries if you want and make it available to other people over the internet if you want. Everything is possible. Okay. Okay. It is not possible to be exhaustive in, in uh, the description of Python. At some point, you will need to read the documentation. Every programming language comes with documentation. It is a, in general, it is a very huge, there is a number, uh, numerous, uh, several uh, documents be hard to read, but you cannot do without reading the documentation. Okay. Um, let's say I want to compute cosinus of something. Okay, so maybe I can try to search for something like that. Okay, maybe I, I have to zoom again, sorry. So what I tried, I use uh, some. Uh, um, I use Google to ask him for Python's documentation. So he give me the page where I can find all the documentation, and then I use a search uh, field in the page uh, looking for cos. Okay, it's the common name for the cosinus function, and. Um, it comes for me with a lot of uh, results. Okay? cmat.cos, mat.cos, cmat.acos for arc cosinus, etc. There is a lot of functions or things defined in Python, in Python <coughs> that uh, use um, COS in their names. Okay? Um, without any surprise, what is interesting me is mat cos. I will not explain you what is CMAT, but okay. It is explained basically. This is for uh, standard mathematical functions. If I use CMAT, I will tell, uh, tell you just after what is CMAT, mat. But the CMAT is for uh, uh, complex numbers. Okay. I don't care about this now. But if you, if you need to make uh, something with the complex number, you have to use CMAT. So what does it mean, mat cos? Okay. Mat cos is the real name of the function that I have to use. In the library, I have books. Okay. 
in such books, you have the definition for different kinds of quiz. Okay, you have books about geometry, books about trigonometry, etc. Okay. So um, this is the name of the book if you want. I, I use the Python book format, and inside that book there is a function that is called cos. And uh, the description told me that if uh, um, there is a parameter which is named x, and uh, in return, uh, if you uh, if I use mat.cos the x, then I will have the cosine of uh, x if x is expressing radians. Okay. Oh, now come. Uh, how how can I use mat cos x? Okay, I can understand that this is the standard syntax. So maybe I can try to use it in my Python interpreter. Okay, let's see what it does. Okay, documentation told me that I can use something like that. Cosinus cosine for say. Um, doesn't work, okay? I used the correct syntax, but it doesn't work. Why? Because I didn't tell Python to get the math book. I need to get the math book first. Okay? Cool. So how it works, I have to tell Python that I want to include the math book in my environment. My basic environment is able to make lots of things, but not the mathematics functions that I want. Yeah. So I ask him, okay, get the math book and all what is inside this book. Okay. Tells me, okay, there is no error. Now, what changes is that I can use MathCos. Okay. Now, after importing the math book, I can use all the functions that are documented in, the, in this book. Okay. Or oh, it, it is almost correct. Because cosine of uh, p over 2 is uh, 0, because it is an approximation of pi. Okay. It is almost zero. So one of the difficulties maybe in programming is to know what are the books that are available, how can I use them? Sorry, but there is no recipe for this. You have to read documentations, a lot of documentations know if there is a book that may contain the fun a function that would be intercepted. In. After doing this several times, you be will become an expert in that language and you will understand what kind of logic there is behind and if there is any hope when you need some functions if there is any hope, what is the probability that we find some book that uh, uh, include um, given functions? Okay. If you don't find an appropriate function, of course you can try to write your own. It is the purpose of this course. Okay. So now, if you want to. I don't know, maybe uh, get some random number that could be interesting. Yes? This is an interesting question. So, 
One try to write something like this and get an error. Very common. Having errors with computers is a common behavior. Okay. What, what is this error? See what uh, Python says. It says that the uh, uh, cos, uh, cosine function exists. There's no problem with this. Huh? But uh, it, uh, it, tell, it tells you that these functions takes only one argument. Remember what the documentation says? One argument here denoted with x, but uh, the name doesn't matter. Okay, only one argument, but apparently there is not one argument here. This should be read like this. If you have, if you need to give different arguments to Python to a Python function, then you have to separate this argument with um, comma. Okay, so this is a call to the cosine function with two arguments. Of course, Python doesn't agree with this. It is needed to have only one argument, not two. So this is you. This is because the mistake was to think that the comma is used uh, for uh, the decimal part to to denote the decimal part, but it is not the case. We have to use the English uh, way of uh, writing numbers is to use dot for the decimal part. So please note that. When I try to compute the cosine, I use dot. Okay? Dot is to specify the decimal part of a number. Okay? So, no surprise when you know all of this. But uh, be careful about uh, that. Um, okay. Um, I was. Uh, Asking if, uh, for example, I can have a random number. Okay, I have to make some experience and I have to try with um, some uh, random things. So, how to get this? Okay, let me think. So, maybe it is a very common task to need a random number. So there is probably something inside Python, a book, where I can find the receipt, the functions, a function, one function, that can return me a random number when I call it. So, okay, let's try. Random. Yeah. There's a lot of things about random in Python, of course. It is very common. So each time you have a very common task to do, you just uh, have to try first in the documentation. Okay, probably it's very high that you have what you need in the standard Python environment. Okay? So the first answer about random is that it tells you, okay, random is a Python module. That is the term that is used, what I call the book. Okay. These books that you are that you need in a library is called a Python module. Okay. So let's say now that I have a module um, random that the main purpose is to get some random things. Okay, so I will probably find something to get the random integer. Okay. So I have the documentation of all the random module. Okay. There's a lot of functions 
Okay. I have to read some, okay? I have to, I have to put some effort on this. Okay, I read very fast, okay, yeah. But I find something that is called round it. That give, given two argument A and B, okay, which is not very difficult to understand that uh, this is a function that will get a random integer in form integer. Okay, between A and B. So, in general, the name of the functions represent something that is very understandable. So, you, you just have to first look, a quick look of the available functions, and we'll, in general, find it very quickly. If not, then you have to read more carefully. Maybe the name of the function is something more uh, strange, but uh, okay, there is a reason for this. Okay, what it tells you, uh, you, you, can, you can get a random integer such that uh, this uh, number is between A and B. Included, uh, uh, I, A and B included, okay? So let's try. It is a module name random. So if, if I want to use it, I need to import the module. So import random. Okay. And after that, I just have to, to get what rand int. Okay, let's say. Ten thirty. Okay, it's in between. If I try several times, of course, I have. Uh, different answer each time I call this function. Oh, be careful about random numbers. They are not really random. You are mathematicians. Maybe you, you know that the randomness is a very difficult task. And computing random numbers, generating computer, uh, random numbers, it's. There is something that's strange about algorithms that can generate random things because algorithms are deterministic. So, okay, they are called pseudo random numbers. It looks like random numbers, but they are not really num uh, random numbers. Okay. But for many tasks, it's, it's very sufficient. Okay. There is one one uh, field in which it is not sufficient is cryptography. You need, you need in this field, you need more strong randomness. Okay, we we don't address this uh, this problem here. Okay, we can use module functions, compute something like that. Okay. There's a lot of things to explore now, but uh, we will try along this, uh, uh, along all the experiments in these three weeks. Okay. I have a question. Now, I will show you how to write. Okay. No, maybe I can I can show you some more some more things. Okay. We have. I, I, I say that I have types, okay? I have numbers that are integers, numbers that are floating points numbers. They are not exactly the same, but they are operators or functions that can operate on, let's say, integers and generate in return floating point numbers or things like that, okay? Even functions are some are ah, in the set of some types, the set of all the functions that you can write in Python. Okay. Um, but, then, but there is uh, some more uh, types. For example, the basic uh, type is string. Okay, say. It 
if I use a quote, jumbo quote, it denotes a string. It is a sequence of characters. Okay. You have different uh, kind of uh, strings, different ways of representing strings. Maybe this one with a double cut yeah. works also. There's a difference in between the both, but we don't address this problem now. Okay. Um, you can see that uh, when I write this string literal using double cuts, then Python understand what it is. It is a string with uh, five characters, and in a at the answer it means a simple quote. Okay. The standard way to represent the string is to use simple quote, simple quoting. But if you use a double, it works. But okay, we have a different kinds of uh, possibilities. Uh, using simple or double quotes, but at the end, the representation, the type, is uh, represented in Python with simple quotes. Okay, exactly the same as when I write three, four is two characters. It has been decoded by Python to understand that it is a number that is encoded inside the machine in binary form. Something very technical. Okay. Remember that the machine always encode, decode things. Okay. So it is the same for the strings. This is a way to specify a string. Python encode this in internally in some ways, and when and when it represents the result. Then it gives you just simple code to say, okay, it is. I understood that it was a string. This is a string. Okay, in a region. Okay, so you have strings, you have numbers. Of course, we will, we will see that we can have different kinds of um, other um, types. Okay, you can manipulate strings. I can give you some. Some very basic manipulation about strings, but okay, strings is a ordered sequence of character. Each one is in a given position. First H is in first, E in two, in position two. But be rare, but computers never start with one, always with zero. This one is at index zero. It is the first character we say that it is the first character of the string, but its position, its index in the sequence is zero. Remember that computers always start counting at zero for many constructions. Okay. Okay. See, so if I want a character, a given character in a string, then then I can use. Um, this notation to get character at position at index two, which is the third character of the string. Okay, position zero, position one, position two. L is okay. This is a way to access individual elements for some types. Okay. We have a lot of kind of these types that are sequence of things. String is a sequence of characters, so we can access individual uh, characters of such a sequence like this. Uh, in Python, you can uh, also um, give some intervals to get subsequences. Okay, this gives you access to individual elements, but if you uh, make something like this, okay, see one, um, double note four, 
Okay, it gives you the sequence of characters of characters in between the subsequence starting from index one up to index four, but not included in index four. It is the open interval. Okay. Oh, you have shortcuts. For example, if you make something like this, okay, you don't precise something for the starting element. Of course, by default, it means the first element. Okay, and it is the same. It is if you make the converse. So if you start at one and doesn't say anything for the end, of course. Up to the end. Okay. You will see that it will work with uh, all the sequence, most of types that are sequence of something. There is of some other types in Python for this. All these structures. We will see in algorithms that we need structures to represent data. Okay. String is a structure that represents sequence of characters. Okay. Um, so I used the command line interpreter, but um, in general, in the, in the okay, let's let me stop this first. Oh, oh, <laughs> there's a lot of question. Uh, okay. Maybe you can ask now for question. This the um, distant participant can ask uh, who is the first that asked for something. I am the one, the first one, I think. Okay. There is a, I just want to talk about a random number. Yes. When we don't uh, uh, define the, the argument. Yes. So. I try, I got a result, some yeah. numbers. Uh, what does it mean? Ah, okay. <laughs> so let me get back to uh, random integers. Remember, some minutes ago, I tried to use a book module random to get the random integer in between 10 and uh, 30 okay and um, one of the participants asked that uh, if i tried this is that is that no what did you try could you write me this in the in the chat in the message like i try to import a, a, a random Yes. And then uh, I define, like, I, I, I uh, took x like a variable. Just, I'll, I'll, just uh, the things I did. OK, copy and pass. Yes, yes, please cut and paste. This will okay. be more efficient. I, I did this one. Ah, OK. <laughs> Yes, this is the definition of random. We may have a look at uh, this. Okay. Uh, where is random? Random, I need to find it. Uh, okay. So distant participant use this function. The function random of the book of the module random. Okay. What uh, what he say is that you don't have to give any argument in return. You have a floating point number randomly chosen in between zero included and one excluded. That's all. Is that something more strange for you?
that is what was defined by, by this function. This function is random. It is not random, round int, round int. Okay, okay, okay. Okay? Okay, okay. Round int is for a given integer interval. Okay? Okay. Is there okay. another question? I think. Uh, no, it's not for me. I'm okay. 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 Um, what will we do? Okay, you have a question, please. I will not answer exactly uh, what happens, but uh, the question is about, okay, I have different ways to generate random numbers. Okay. Maybe I can find different function to get random integers with uh, different kinds of arguments or method names. Okay. This is called a method okay, or function if you want. Which is the most efficient? I have no answer actually. This is not the, my problem actually. But of course, maybe if there is in fact only one function that is able to get the random number, and then this function is the kind of adaptator. It gets some random number in between, I don't know, a fucking point number, and get with some uh, algebraic computation, okay? Um, Round number in between the range. You, you can you, you can get in general you have different kinds of ways to get a result. There is not only one way to get random hints. Okay. Uh, well, my first question is the hints calls the method range. Uh, right? If you know this button. Look at how it works. It is not always so good. Oh. I'm just checking on the communication as well. You have a look at the, at the source of the product. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And you found that it goes in the wrong direction. I, I'm not sure it is a good moment to answer this. Expert programmers in general will answer okay. Don't ask this question too early. This is called premature optimization. When you write a program, the first task is to write the correct program that gives that gives you the results. And that is very difficult. When you obtain a correct program, then you can ask yourself, okay, if it takes too much time to run. What you, you can ask why it takes too much time. And you have to observe where are the points 
for the computers take time to compute some operation inside. So if it is easy for you to get a random number like this, then use it. Maybe it is not very important if you if it's a little bit longer than according the range, the range function that you find. This is not this is not always a problem. We'll see when we will talk about complexity in the algorithm parts. But at first, try to make a running a correct program that generates your 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 results. After that, you can ask, okay, can I make it faster? This is a very technical point, but okay. So oh, okay, I can use the um, I can use the interactive uh, interpreter mode of uh, Python, but uh, if I want to write programs, this will, this will not be the case. I want to write programs. It's a sequence of Python's instructions, expressions. I want to store it in a file and then run that file each time I need to run the program, okay? So what uh, we will use in the this, uh, this, uh, this weeks, for example, there is not, this is not the, okay, sorry. This is not the, the sole possibility, the only, there is not only one possibility, so it's applications. <laughs> was the main purpose was to write programs. Okay, it is not easy to write a long programs, even a short program using interactive mode and it's not a convenient. Okay. So what I need is a, an editor. I need to edit the programs, arrange instructions, ordering instructions, store this in a file and then, okay. So this kind of uh, tool is called IDE. Okay. Was well, the main purpose is to write uh, programs. Okay. Uh, what I uh, suggested for this uh, course is to use PyCharm, but you can use some others. This one is very simple. There is no difficulty to uh, use it. Okay. So at the beginning, when you launch PyCharm, in general, it asks you uh, to uh, create a project. Ah, I need to zoom. Oh, it's not very easy to zoom all the forms, but okay. Maybe something like that. Okay. It, it asks you, oh, let's see, okay. The first time in general, it asks you for creating a project. What is a project? Okay. Um, remember that um, just before we write instruction in which we used some modules. A project is a set of modules that when I compose, gives you a program, that's all. Okay, so a project is just a set of modules that you have to write, that you can write to get a program. Okay, at the beginning, okay, we don't have to make too much modules, but okay, uh, let me test, uh, okay. Uh, TCP, uh, 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 MP, I think. Okay. Okay. At that. So I give a name to that project, and you can you can have, of course, several projects. Okay. <laughs> so this is what you have 
when you uh, answer the first form okay so the project is just a name of a directory on your machine where the files will be stored and um, this is um, the main window of what is called an IDE, all of IDEs looks the same, okay? So in general, you have a huge part in this window, which is the editing part. You can make editions in this, in this part. You can type characters, select characters, etc. Okay? On the left, here, you have a left part. This is the content of the project. What is very important here is that I have something here which is called main.py. Okay. See? You can just ignore what's Main pine and set main pine. Main pine is just a py. It's just the name of a file, and I use uh, extension py just to note that it contains Python's instructions. This is the common extensions for Python's files that contain Python's instructions. You use txt for text files, things like that. PY is the common extension for Python's instructions, okay? So what, uh, um, what has been done when I created a, a project, then uh, my software just created one file called main.py that contains very basic instructions just this is if i select this file then what i see in the editing part because I, I can have several python files here this is not important for the beginning but okay i have at least one and i can edit this uh, this um, file Okay. Let okay. This is a Python program. We actually don't know what this instruction means. It is not really important for the moment. But um, okay, I can edit. Um, save this file and. Of course, I want to run it when I need it. And this uh, button, it's not very easy to show it, but uh, this button, see, when I put the, the mouse uh, over it, suggests me that it, is, it can be used to run the program, okay? Main. The file was named main.py, but the program is main. Okay, so I can try. Let's see what it will do if I run that program. Okay, the first part about, uh, uh, appears in the window. Okay, where I have the results of the run. Okay. So on the left, I have the content of my project or the file that I need to run, the different module I used, I write, I used in my program. Here I have a, a place to edit some of the file in my project. I can edit as I want. And when I run, okay, then the result of the run is produced on the lower part of the window, okay? So what does this uh, run? It tells me, okay, I run Python with the file main.py, okay? 
So you tell me where, uh, which, which Python I used, and where was the file? Where is the file? Okay, it was stored some, somewhere. It is not very important where. And after that, you have different lines which correspond to the instructions, the execution of all the instructions in the file main.py. Okay? So this basic program just produces i by chart. That's all. And at the end, okay, it tells you, okay, process finished, exit code zero. It means that everything is okay. Okay? So this is the way we will uh, program this weeks. We use PyCharm or something else if you prefer, but uh, create different files, Python files, write some instruction inside, try to run and observe it, see if it works or not. This is the basic things of uh, creating programs. Okay, which kind of instruction that we can uh, put inside? Okay, let's simplify at the extreme this uh, program. Okay, see, I, I am editing main.py. I delete everything inside. Okay, maybe, I, oh, okay. Let me zoom. Uh, editor, I think, font. Oh, maybe I can zoom more. Okay, is it? Oh. oh. Let's see. Maybe more than this. Okay. I hope that it is readable at the end. Okay. Oh, so okay. What uh, what I I am going to do? Something very easy. This is a very simple program. Okay. You don't know, you may know the you may not know the details of what exactly is right on here, but I'm sure you can understand what this program is intended to do. You can recognize here that it is a string, I, everybody, okay? It is given as an argument to a function, okay? And what is the name of this function? Print, okay? I can understand that you will print on the screen the message that I gave, okay? Let's try. This is exactly what I said. It prints I, everybody on the console part, the run part of the IDE, okay? So this is a very simple program. You have an instruction here. That instruction is, ju is just um, calling a function with some arguments, okay? Of course, a program is just putting different kind of instructions. Okay, let's say print three by one, something like that. This is another program, very basic. Okay. So you may ask me why I didn't write something like that. Okay, remember that in interactive mode, if I want the result of Three plus four. I what? I I wrote three plus four, and it gives me the result. Let's see what happens if I run. I uh, write this as a program. You see that three plus four 
is nothing on the screen. You are not in interactive mode. In interactive mode, you give expression, expressions of value, and the Python answer you with by printing the value on the screen. But here we are not in uh, interactive mode. If you want to print something, you have to ask for it. This does not mean that uh, three plus four is not computed. It is computed by Python when I run. The result is produced, but I did not say, I said nothing um, to do with this uh, value. So it is just, If I want some output, I have to tell that I want an output for something. Okay? So basically, a program is just a sequence of instructions. Okay? This one a very basic, very stupid program, but okay. Of course, you may understand that if I have just a such kind of uh, possibilities, programs were, are not in very interesting, but okay. Um, what I can do? Okay, I can do some outputs, but of course, sometimes uh, in programs, you need input from the user, okay? That is very common. Ask uh, what is the name of the file? Uh, how many uh, students you want to store in the database? Okay, the program is waiting for the user to input something. It is a very common task. How does it work in Python? Or maybe I have to go back in uh, the interactive mode to show you something very important in the, uh, programming languages which is the concept of variables, okay? Um, yeah, so can we like take a, sh a short break and then- Ah, okay, if you want. Yeah, we should take a break, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. then, yeah, both for the online and the physical participants. <laughs> okay, 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 that's okay. <laughs> uh, how long? Um, at least we should, uh, uh, because we should take some tea, I think. Uh, okay. Well, so we... Oh. 15 minutes? Let's say 20 minutes, yeah. 20, okay. Let's have a break for 20 minutes. <laughs> Not break. Twenty minutes.
What is your reply? Yes. Yes, you have to install uh, separately by Trump and Biden. Yes. 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 We, you, you have to bind by Trump to the Biden. That, that is the problem. Maybe we will uh, we will uh, solve this when we. Yes, 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 uh, yes, but it is difficult to explain because by, by default. Uh, normally, when you install these things, everything should work correctly. But but sometimes it does not. Yes, just, just, I, I know we we tried this.
so instead of this so this is just a screen to show me that that is the file i'm writing yes but when i want to run it in the browser, or when i press yes it, all this is red by python yes then it swaps yes and then returns the answer so yes it, yeah, yeah. But now people are calling this interface here Python. Is it the Python? Or... No, 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 no. Yes, this is this not the Python. Yes, yes. The, this is just a tool to edit the file and to run Python on the file. Yes. So that's what okay. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we can log in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, um, we may start again. Yes, please. So uh, let, let me start again. Okay. So maybe maybe there is some confusion in between what is Python on what is PyCharm. It may be not so clear to everybody. Okay. Remember that at first I use Python in interactive mode where I can put instructions, okay? Or expression like this, okay? This is the basic uh, Python use. You can see it as a very um, complex calculator. Okay, that's the mode. If you want to uh, stop uh, Python, then you just have to, uh, stop the interactive mode you just have to call quit okay no there is another way to use python the way is you can put instruction into a file you store python instruction to into a file okay and ask python to execute the instructions that are into the file okay how does it work? For example, let, let me uh, put something into a file. Don't, okay, something like that. I can use an editor to um, uh, make something, uh, to put uh, something, uh, some instruction into a file. Say this file is called, uh, okay test.py okay i put something like this okay bonjour which is hello in french okay this is a file i put text inside this text represents a python instruction okay if i want python to execute this file i just have to call python on this file okay so i said okay i say Python, please execute what is inside test by dot by. Okay. If I do this, it executes all the instructions inside. There is only one actually, but okay. What PyCharm is, is a tool that helps you to edit the files, store the files, execute the files. Behind the scene, we have an editor which lets you edit the content of the files. And then when you click on the run, it executes Python on the file. PyCharm is not Python. PyCharm is just an editor and running tool for Python files. Okay. So some of you may have installed, I don't know, very several distribution for PyCharm. If you uh, install the PyCharm Community Edition, which is free, then in general, it installs you PyCharm plus Python. 
you may have installed a PyCharm um, standalone application and then install Python, but you have to bind both. So this is some of you may experience this problem. Okay, we will see. Uh, uh, maybe we, we can take some time this afternoon to uh, solve all these problems, but okay. So when I use PyCharm, it is not Python. There is Python behind the scene. I can use PyCharm to edit something else if I want, but okay. Um, there is a, another thing that is very convenient using PyCharm. Of course, you can use a tool like TextEdit or a very simple uh, editor, file editor to, um, um, to make uh, Python programs. But it is not very convenient because you don't have some uh, useful functionalities in TextEdit to uh, edit programs. It's just to edit text. Okay, you can uh, basically uh, cut and paste. Uh, that, that's all. If you use PyCharm, you uh, can look at um, various colors that are used uh, to represent things and helps you to uh, read your programs. So, okay, it is uh, blue or violet, I don't know, it depends on, on the projector on the screen, uh, to uh, show you that this is a function, this is a literal, okay. So there is syntax coloring. Okay. And uh, more on this, of course, when you make run, you don't have to ask where is the file that I want to run and type uh, long ex uh, longer commands to your system. Everything is automatic. This is why it is much more convenient to use PyCharm, but okay. Two tools, Python that can interpret Python instruction and PyCharm, which is used to edit your programs. Okay. Of course, there's a link in between. So PyCharm can help you to run. So it have to um, access the Python interpreter. But two tools, okay. Not sure. Yes, you can uh, you can use Visual Studio Code. There is a question um, from a distant participant. Of course, you can use um, any other tools. Uh, appropriate tools if you want if you if you know how visual studio code works of course you can edit and run a python program uh, from uh, this to, from uh, this tool there is no problem uh, with this okay so um let me go back to um to uh interpreter to the interactive mode of python sometimes you need to make different computations okay store the result of these computations to combine this result to obtain another computation Okay, I don't know, but uh, maybe you want to compute, um, let's say, um, okay, and I've, I, I have to uh, import random, uh, import um, math, okay, I want to make some math with random numbers, okay, let's say I want to uh, compute something like math.cos, the random of random random number of some random floating point number. Okay, I can do this. Okay. But I, sometimes it is much more convenient to combine this in uh, another way. It is not very convenient to uh, um, make huge expressions. Okay, you want to uh, obtain uh, an intermediate value and use that value in different kinds of computation. Let's say I want one random number and compute on this random number, the sa that same random number 
the cosine and the sinus of it. Of course, I cannot make this then sine because it is not what I want. Okay. In the in this in both these instructions, the random number is not the same. Each time I call random, I have a, a new number. What I want is get one given random number and compute cos on it and sin on the same. Okay, how can I do this? I just want to store the result of what random gave me and apply this, apply cos and sin on this. Okay. Okay, let's let me write this. Okay. See? When I write result equals random dot random uh, with parentheses. Okay. This is a very special kind of Python instruction or expression if you want. This is not the uh, mathematical equality. This is called an assignment. It's a very special instruction. Computers are made of memory. You may know that this, okay? When you buy a computer, you buy memory, okay? And um, this memory is used to store computation results, okay? So what is done here is that I want to compute something and the result of these expressions, in general expression gives results. That is not true for all expression, but for most of them it is true. Okay, this gives you a new random number and I want to store this random number somewhere. Okay. So I use the nine integer like this. A name. I can choose a name. Okay. And what equals means here is that it stores the result of this into this variable. When I use the new identifier, which is not which uh, doesn't exist, then some memory is reserved and name. Okay, there is a storage that is reserved by the machine in which you can put some value inside. Okay. So you can see that there is no uh, answer. The machine doesn't give you any answer to this. It does something that has no effects on the screen. The value of this expression is just stored in some place. In some location in the memory okay if i want to know what is the value of result i just have to ask i write an expression see result is a new expression if result is the name of a storage created before then i have the content of this storage okay each time I call results, I have the content of this storage. Okay. So be careful. A variable, a uh, uh, um, a comp uh, yes, a variable in a programming language is something very special. It is not a mathematical variable. It is not an unknown or something like that. It is a storage. It is a name storage you can put value value inside with the assignment operator and you can get the value inside just calling it okay so in any expression you can use this storage for example you can compute three plus results okay it gives you three dot okay. so i use constant three plus four three and four are constant but i can store a result of computation in any variable i want okay if i write v equals three plus four it computes three plus four 
seven and store seven in a new variable v okay and v has value seven of course if i change the value of, i can change i can use a new assignment for v i can put inside v the result of six plus seven okay v is now 13. okay a storage can have different values over time at a given time you have only one value but over time you can change the value of the storage it's a story okay so let's uh, go back to uh, uh, compute uh, cost until on the same random value i store the random value in uh, my, my variable results okay and then of course i can compute that cost the over result or mat scene i have this oh, 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 oh don't know what happens sorry okay believe me or believe the machine it is the possibility something is that is applied to the same value in between the two calls of the function cost and sinus i didn't change results so it is applied on the same value okay so when programming programming is about uh, calling function storing intermediate results applying over function combine all of this okay be careful this is one of the difficulties with pythons but uh, you may ask okay v is actually storing the value of 13 okay but um, what kind of value can i store in v remember that each value has a type there is integer values floating points strings etc so you can uh, ask okay but what can i store in v in fact you can store everything you want over time I mean that now v contains an integer value but i can change this okay now i decide that v contains a string value be careful this is not the case for all programming languages in python you have variables you can put any value you want into a variable okay this is possible but be careful not to use this too frequently okay prefer using the same type or kind of value in a given uh, variable but okay you will uh, see that it is not always the case in uh, <clears throat> some uh, python uh, library that's uh, modules like that. okay so you, you can uh, you can use any um, identifier you want okay what is an identifier okay what is a, a correct syntax for identifiers so identifiers are made are mix are a mix of alphabetic characters and uh, digits okay. but it should start with a character so a variable can be named v9 if i want okay and i can store anything i want okay this is an acceptable identity v9 okay but what is forbidden is to start with a digit 
This is not an acceptable identifier. 9D is not an acceptable identifier. See, if I try this, I have an invalid syntax. Okay? No, name it as you want. But please, when you create uh, an identifier, use something that is meaning for humans. Okay? Don't call your variable T x or things like that except if x or t means something clear okay if you mean that it is a variable that represents some time okay t is acceptable it is a uh, thing like it is very common for uh, for uh, physicists to use t as a variable uh, that contains a value for the time okay but if you want to store the name of somebody then use a variable that is called name, okay? okay. If I want to store my, my first name, okay, it is better than to use something like, okay, foo, <laughs> it doesn't represent anything. Okay, what is the variable foo? What does it contain? Okay, so prefer using variables, identifier for variables that have a meaning, okay? This will ease the, read, the readability of your programs. Okay. Writing programs is a difficult task. Reading programs is much more difficult than, than writing ones. It's strange, but it is like this. So you, you have to choose carefully the identifier you are using. Okay. Okay, you can store um, intermediate result in variables. That's uh, a point. You can do uh, other things, of course. Suppose that you want to compute something several times. Okay. Maybe you want to compute, let's say, this several times. Okay. Well, I don't want to write this several times. Okay, it is very error prone. Okay. What you uh, do when you make mathematical proof? In general, you first make lemmas and things like that. And then your theorem is a very short thing. Just apply lemma one, then lemma three, then etc. You are you factor the things. It is a very common task when when calculating uh, when uh, yes, calculating things. Okay, you learn to factor expressions when you um, learn uh, arithmetics and things like that, okay? This is the same when computing. When you are uh, to make several times a given task, then you can factor this. Okay. How to factor such a task? You have to create what is called a function, okay? A Python function is just a sequence of instruction that you can name. Okay. Let me show you. Okay, maybe this. I want to call this. Um, okay, what what is done here? It it, cal it computes the uh, sign of a random number. So maybe I want to call this sign wrong. Okay, let's define this. Oh, this is a very strange definition. Okay, no, okay. Death, okay. Let, let me uh, write everything and then show you. Okay.
this is the definition of a new function the function doesn't that doesn't exist until this definition okay i used an identifier okay sign round is not a, an existing identifier okay in which i put some instruction this is the definition of a function so what what is a function it takes arguments and when you apply this function you get a result in in return okay so this is the definition of a function with arguments here you have the list of the arguments okay, this is easy this list is empty there is no argument okay f is a is a, is a reserved word that is used to introduce the construction of a new function to introduce a variable it is very easy you use a, a, a nine notifier and a nice assignment okay that's all for a function you have to define the function okay a function by itself is just a sequence of instruction this does nothing it does something if you call this function okay so i define a new function with no argument inside okay i, I have to put this uh, uh, no. what is the name of this character sorry come on, come on. okay thanks and you uh, you 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 uh, put a, a colon okay the colon mark and you have to follow this uh, first line with a sequence of instruction here there is only one instruction inside but okay you see later and what is very important is that the definition of this function has to be um, Ah. Ah, yeah. you have to indent the yes sorry you have to indent the sequence of instructions um, below the first line that introduce the function what is very important is that for all the sequence of instructions you have to use the same indentation for all here i use the tabulation but you can use maybe two space so if you have a sequence of instruction always use tabulation one or two but always the same number of the spacing the same in notation okay we will see later this uh, syntax problem okay so this is the body of the uh, function okay now I have a new function that is called sit long. If I want to use this, I just have to call it okay. Sin rand. Okay. What Python Python does when I write this is just to run all the instructions that are in the body of the function definition okay yes the question is why i need to put the parentheses in the definition because i am defining a function i need to specify what are the parameters of this function actually there is no parameter so i just have to specify that there is no parameters of so then an empty list parameters okay we need 
it is the syntax of uh, Python. Okay, now I want, okay, this, this is the next one. I, I, I want to define functions that are parameters. Okay, this function is not very clear. I don't know, but maybe it is interesting, but uh, okay. If I want to uh, have parameters, then I can define, of course, a function with parameters. This is a very stupid example, but okay. Example are, are very often stupid. This is another function, okay? Which is called add. And if you give me two parameters, two values, it has two parameters. When you call it, you have to give it two values for this parameter. Then it computes the sum of the two parameters and return the result, okay? I did not tell you what does, but if you write a function that represents a computation that gives you a value, okay, then when you your sequence of instructions uh, uh, did compute this value, you have to say that you want to return the value. When you call this function. Okay, oh, how it works? If I call this, okay, it, it is stupid. I have the operator plus that uh, is doing the same. Okay, when I use add for um, comma five, that is an expression that calls a function. What does it mean calling a function? It takes the expression that you uh, uh, put into the calling expression, okay? That is an expression that represents an integral number. Five is another expression. You separate with comma, okay? This maps that value to x, maps five to y, run all the instruction inside that are the, that inside the body of this function. So it creates a variable result which which computes which contains the uh, value of uh, x plus y. Okay, and then it returns the result. What does it mean? It means that these expressions have still computed all the instructions. As a value which is computed inside. Okay, you pass parameters to the function, compute something with this, and then the function returns you a value that was computed. Okay, that's the way functions, Python functions works. You pass parameters, and the functions when It is needed to return a value as an instruction returns to precise that value. Okay. Of course, you can call this on any expression you want. Okay. What happens here? It uh, happens that before calling add, you evaluate all the expressions that are given. Four plus five, six, nine. Nine plus 10 gives you 19. Then now that all the sub expressions are evaluated, you call all the instructions of add by mapping the results of four plus five and uh, nine plus ten 
respectively to X and Y. Then you run all the instruction inside, it computes something, no, okay. it returns the result. Then these expressions is what was computed, what was stored into the result. Okay. You can think of X and Y as temporary variables that exist only when you call add. Okay. Of course, I can store a value in A, store another value in B, and call add with A and B. It works. Remember what does it mean? A is a variable, so its value, it's, its content. If I go back in time, the last assignment of A was four, then here four is the value of this argument. Okay. B, if I go back in time, the last assignment of B contained um, 100, 100, then this is exactly calling add with four and 100. It runs all the instruction into add. It returns the result, which is uh, 104. And then this expression has a value, which is 104. Okay, this is not different than what happens when, okay, nobody <laughs> had the difficulties when I wrote something like this, okay? Remember, I call the function, give a parameter and this as a value. I define my own function, okay? Computing cosinus is not an easy task, okay? But there is instruction behind that computes cosinus for this argument given in I think it would be more useful if that camera shows ah. you because when you go this yeah. value, yeah. distance yes. students have no idea what you are. I thought about this uh, this morning and I forget. Okay. Yes, maybe. But uh, C or K or yes, yes. But, uh, I think we may stop for this morning. Well, Jaid, are you online? Yes, I am. Yeah, mm -hmm. Is it time to stop for this morning? No, not, not yet. Yeah, you have two more minutes. Minutes actually. I don't know if you want to use it or you want to donate to us. <laughs> no, I, I, yes, I can use some minutes. Ah, okay. Then you can stop in a few. That's fine. Okay. What can I do? To make interesting program. Okay, I can factor some computations by creating functions. Okay. But actually, the only thing that I uh, am able that I am able to do is to is to make a list of instructions that are executed in order. One after one, exactly what I did in the interactive mode. Okay, I put an expression, severity, then I can put another expression that may depend on the on the on the expression before because I store a value in some variable, some things like that. But okay, it's just running a second of function from the first to the last one. Okay. Maybe I can uh, interrupt this flow 
by calling a function, but basically it is exactly the same. Okay? I execute. Okay. Maybe. I have to say that it is much better to. Okay, or we will see it. Okay. So you execute, basically, you execute instruction one after the other, starting for the first up to the last one. In the meanwhile, okay, I can interrupt this flow by calling a sequence of instructions that are stored in the definition of a function. Okay. But basically, it is exactly the same. It is simply a sequence of instructions. This is not so interesting. If you do something like that, it is just a complex calculator. It is not computing. Computing is much more than calculating a complex expression. What you have is some special instruction that can break this order of instruction. Okay. You have special instruction in programming language, in programming languages, even in Python, to um, change this flow of instructions. One of these, a very basic one, is which is called if then else. You may want to compute something depending on some value. Okay, if this number is even, I want to make something. If the number is odd, I want to make something else. It is very natural, okay? This is called an alternative, okay? If then else, so I can show you how, it, how if then else works. It is, it is not very uh, easy to um, illustrate it in, um, in the interactive mode. It is better to use it when you write programs, okay? I don't want to make calculation. I don't want, I want to make computations. Okay, so how it looks, oh, sorry. Let's make something like that, okay? So this program uh, say hello, compute something. Okay, it is very basic. We'll see later. And I want to make something uh, depending on a uh, value computed before. Say that if the result that was stored in A is greater than 10, I want to print something and it gives less than 10 less or equal than 10, for example, I want to print something else, okay? How it works, something like I write it, okay? Oh, sorry. So. Okay. What this does, maybe I can. Uh, this is just like a kind of no railways when they you separate uh, the, the the railways into branch uh, yes branch railways branch okay so common flow of instruction is just going straight in a single ray then you have a branch and sometimes you go to the left sometimes you go to the right okay depending on some condition this is exactly the same. This program has two uh, uh, flows 
of executions. There is one that, okay, print this message, compute some things, and depending on some conditions, goes to this branch, or if this condition is false, goes to this branch, and after that, those two branches um, converge to the same, merge to the same. Okay, and then you have this. Okay, so either the execution makes something like this and goes here, or here, then here, and then it goes here. Okay. And a side question is maybe maybe it's completely could be confusing for them. Why don't you use a a random system? Yes, of course, of course, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. I, yes, you're, you're right. Okay. Uh, on int. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course. Ah. Hmm. PyCharm. Okay. I am using random round int, and you can see what PyCharm says. It. Uh, underline random with a red line which says okay you are using the module random but you didn't declare that i have you you want to use it okay so what i need to correct this is to start with some point with random okay i am importing random now um by chance is uh, okay with this uh, there's and other things, you may observe that uh, some things are underlined, not in red, but here in uh, something which is more or less yellow. It is not a mirror, okay? It's just a warning, okay? A warning. So uh, the editor is just saying, okay, you should not write this like this. It's okay, it's not an error, but it's not really readable. There is a, a, a more standard way to use this is to separ separate with space. It is much more readable, that's all, okay? This is an assignment. You can put space around the equal sign, but it doesn't change anything if you put uh, several space or no space. It is better to use at least one. No, it is much more readable. Okay. Okay. Why uh, Roberto uh, told me to uh, use random? Of course, because before a has a, um, a value which is always seven. So my program is was absolutely stupid. My first intention is to change the the value of a. But okay, let's. Let's uh, imagine uh, what this program does. It takes a random number, and uh, I want to know if it's, this random number is big or not. What What is uh, the condition to express that uh, uh, my random number is big or not? Okay, if it's less than 10, it is not big. It is greater than 10, greater or equal than 10. I consider that this number is big, okay? <laughs> So oh, this program does exactly that, okay? I store a computation, whatever it is, here is just getting a random number, and then I can express conditions. Okay, this is almost natural, I suppose. A is a variable here, okay? But it is a storage that has a value, that is uh, um, that is uh, read at the time you execute this instruction. Okay. The instruction is if else. That's an instruction. Okay. Print is a simple instruction. Assignment is a simple instruction. If is, is a structured instruction. Okay. That has at least the condition that can be complex. And in the case this condition is true a list of instructions to execute when the condition is true 
And when the condition is false, behind uh, else, below else, you have a sequence of instructions that are to be executed when the condition is false. And after that, after this single instruction, if it's a single instruction, then you have some more instruction in order that are executed in order after executing the alternative. Okay. Okay. So let's see, we can execute this. Of course, each time I execute this, I have different kinds of results. Okay. One execution say, okay, it is big, big, not big, big, not big, not big. Okay, it is random, of course. Okay. Um, what can I do? Of course, I know that there is a function is in the math module that can compute the absolute value for a number. But suppose, suppose that there, there is not such a function. How can I write it? But it is not difficult. Say I define, I call it absolute if I want, that takes a parameter x. How does it work? If x is less than zero, then its absolute value is minus x. And if not, it is x. I can write it. Okay. If x is less than zero, then I return I return minus x. If not, else it returns x. Okay. Oh, I have one in there. I must put space around operators. It is better. Okay, so I can use this function. Okay, I can't print the result of absolute, uh, say, minus five if I want. Or five. In both cases, of course, the reason is fine. So it's very natural to make different things depending on values. Of course, expressions can be complex. You can uh, test very different things. One, one thing that is important here is that if works that conditions should return should have a value that is a boolean value remember there is different kind of types in python integers floating points strings you also have boolean with integers you have operators that are arithmetic operators plus minus Modulo, integer divisions, exponentiation, etc. With strings, you have uh, things that can uh, get uh, substrings, elements in strings, etc. Then you can obtain a Boolean value by using some uh, comparators, okay? Some operators that compare value. You can uh, imagine that this one is greater or equal. Be careful, you have to put the uh, equal just after the return sign. You can write, you cannot write it equal uh, read. This is the wrong way to write it, okay? The right way to make greater or equal. Of course, you have the strict operator, less, less or equal. You, so such an operator return a Boolean value, true or false. Okay. 
And depending on true or false, you make the if part or the else part. Okay. You can combine booleans. You have operator to combine booleans. If a is greater than 10 and uh, a modulo 2, okay, you can write it like this. Say, big even. Stupid example, okay, I know. But, okay, this is a Boolean, this produce a Boolean value, this produce another Boolean value. If you want to test if two values are equals, be careful, the operator is equal, equal. Remember that operator equal is used for assignment. You cannot put an assignment here. You have to put an expression that evaluates as a Boolean. So if you want to test the operator is equal, equal. Okay. If I put a single equal, of course it is a syntax error. Okay. If you want to express different than this is equal equals to different is something like that. You write it. X uh, um, which is that mark? It is a extra machine mark. Thank you. Extra, extra machine mark equals this means different. Okay. So you can come in, of course, you can imagine that you have and or. You can also make and not if you want. Okay, you have Boolean operators, the common are and or not. Not so difficult. Okay. What kind of instruction do we have? Suppose I want to repeat something. Let's say that uh, someone wants to explain me how to get outside this room. You can tell me, okay, you have to walk, make 10 steps. So what I did, what I know is one step, two step, three step, four step, five step, six step, seven step, ten. Okay. I have to make ten times the same function. Step is a function form. You can do this in a program. You can ask to repeat something. Say n times if you want. Okay. How does it work? <laughs> Suppose I want to. What I can do? Something like that. Oh, before introducing something like that one, well, no, okay, it's okay. Let me introduce this this kind of construction. Okay. Remember when I did the 10 steps, step one, step two, step three, I have an index that's changed from one, two, three, up to 10. This is exactly this construction. 
I want to repeat something. Here is very easy. I just want to print integers from zero to 10. Okay. So I have something to, I have an instruction that is printing some integer, say i. But I want i to change from zero to 10. Okay. Then this is a for loop. This construction is an instruction, is a Python instruction to repeat something. You can repeat the sequence of the instruction, the body. Okay. Here, the body is just one instruction, but I can put several if I want. Okay. And this expresses that for i, that is in range 0 to 10. I will take all the value in 0 to 10, starting from 0, execute all the instruction, then looping back, get the new, the, uh, the <laughs> next value. I was at 0, then 1, then 2. Okay. So this make print 0, print 1, print 2, print 4, 3, 4, etc. If I execute this, okay, you will see that it executes print zero, print one, print two, print three, print four, print five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. You can repeat a number, given number of times a sequence of instruction. Why not? Okay. If I want to compute 100 times a call to uh, some function, I don't have to write 100 lines. I just have to loop over the same call. I can use the variable that is the index of the step, the parameters, the sequence of instruction, if I want. Okay. Yes, is that a good time to take a break? Yes. Okay, so let's uh, stop. Um, uh, Jared, could you tell um, distant participant when we, we will start again? Please. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll share the timetable on the Google uh, on the Google uh, sheet. But the thing is that we assume at two p.m. Kenyan time. Actually, it's uh, two fifteen. <laughs> but okay. uh, we testing the gadgets at two fifteen, um, and we all break for lunch. And I think uh, the Kenyan locals will show you where to go. <laughs> and I think let's all live together. And I think we we need to you know appreciate our lecturer this morning. Yeah, so let's all, yeah, thank you. Thanks. So we, uh, let's, but uh, we, we, will, we will leave the Zoom open for those who are online. You just need to maybe put off your camera and your, your mic, and then you will come if you have good uh, panel. Do, do you prefer, do you prefer to let it open or? Yes, I prefer to let it open, but of course okay. I'll audit. Other things, yes, okay. uh, I will leave it open. I prefer to leave it op open. Okay. And all of us, if you have good network, you can, you know, just stay on the meeting, just uh, switch off your, uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's okay, you can leave and then come back. That's fine. I yeah. just stop the sharing. That's all. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's see. Roberto, tu es sur Zoom là? 
toi. Dis-moi si... Parce que je vais le mettre en... Pas en veille, mais je vais le... Attends. Euh, si je verrouille l'écran, ça continue à tourner Non, je vois déjà autre chose. Oui, oui, mais... Euh... Oui, d'accord. Bon, je pense que c'est bon. C'est juste pour éviter de laisser... Normalement, ça ne me déconnecte pas, mais attends, bah, je vais me reconnecter. Moi. Oui, oui, ça, je l'ai arrêté. Oui. Mais c'est bizarre. C'est bizarre, on dirait qu'il m'a jeté. Tu me vois toujours dans la liste Ah oui. Oui, je suis en réunion en Zoom. Okay. Okay. Ce qui est bizarre, c'est pourquoi je ne le vois plus. Ok, ok. Ok. Thank you. 
Oh, he loves his Sometimes I show things on the when we when, when we when yeah. yeah. yes, so so I I saw I saw the one you wrote on the yeah. Yeah. So, so when when, uh, when for example the capital is there and you the writing something like what? pointing even yes, yes. yes. the pointing the there yeah. is no interest for them to see that yeah yeah, yeah. we will organize because that means so I mean, has to. I think yeah. we probably should be moved somewhere mm -hmm. there. So it's yeah. just put it there. It's just or put it here. Yeah. I think uh, maybe it's too close. Yeah, no, 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 you can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you probably. And you I, see I, and I have to point with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Let's go, let's go back. If the camera, let's go. Because if the camera is here, yeah, just put, 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 put
No, no, I, I know what I can. Yes, I, because I have an application for this, which is screen uh, screen pointer. No, no, it's oh. not the screen pointer. It's screen pointer, pointer, and I can do this. Okay. Oh, okay. This is much yes. It is much more convenient. No, 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 no. It's okay for the camera because if I want to. Um, to show something, I can do this. Okay. Oh. Ouais, 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 j'ai une application qui fait ça. Si tu vois, c'est un truc. Et en plus, je peux changer le. Alors, attends. I can change transfer. Uh, let me see. Ah. But sometimes it comes natural. Just go there and see. Yes, yes, yes. I know. Uh, okay. No, but, but we, that's our suggestion. We will do that. Okay. I, I can I can do something like this. Yes. You see, I, I want to to show something. I can do. Okay. How many people there were this morning? Twenty something. Okay, okay. Wow, I just this part five. It's 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 okay. I think it's okay. So you see, I can I can do something like that, and people will see. I see, but. They are doing what you tell them not to do, right? But you don't not post questions on the Zoom and post them on the on the Google and they do it. Yeah, 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 because I don't know what the challenge was, but uh, okay. I would prefer them to write them. And so okay. lots See? of these questions are still without answer, right? No, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, but you can, yeah, you can you can put some in there, but it's fine. And maybe when they start, otherwise. Otherwise, that's why I wanted them to be on uh, Moodle because I don't want you to. So you, know, you have two audience, and you. Yeah, yeah we have to say that actually, actually yeah. we will we will not be able to, to to follow up with all the questions. Yes, yeah. yeah. but uh, is there something that? Uh, but, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that it would be almost for a much more. Is it, is it safe to move? Yeah, that is safe. Yes, yes, yes. You, you, you go so through. Okay. Yeah, yeah, safe, yeah. safe. Well, sometimes, yeah. you know, as a teacher, sometimes he's on the phone. Yeah. And no, it's okay. If we stick it in that camera, and we put, uh, we can put it somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when he's on the board, you say, oh, that shows money. money. Uh -huh. When yeah. he's on the board, you should be also checking the board. It's very important. I think always. It's more interesting. It's more interesting to show the students at the beginning, but last you want to say it, see them, but from now on, who cares? Yeah, so you should put it somewhere where it shows yeah. them. Uh, because if you believe, if you get to believe, yeah? Yeah, it's shut up. Oh, there's a kid. But anyway, it's, uh, it's your. I was problem. thinking yeah. there. Look, yeah, you have given your problem, there. so you give us the solution. Maybe it is too far away. Maybe just here. Oh, no, no, I'll find my own. No, we have given you more problem. There. Okay. <laughs> Let's wait for the presentation. So you, you are closing the room? You can yes, I'm closing the room. Thanks. See you later. You can come back here for me.
Alafu three options. Yes. Yeah, today is a good day. You didn't wear a dress, you can jump. So no good, it doesn't you can jump. The corner is the corner. i the I don't know. What do you call it? 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 What the audience in your culture. On a German and 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 a USB. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm Machine I will project in a minute. We have a lunch. What a lunch. We have a camera set up to to my. As here, when you are born, and I saw that one or two is pointing out. Is You have to move the laptop. Second Hmm? 
जहाँ पर बच्चे को सही इस पे क्या होगा So, more than we have to move on, the machine has to be
Switch it one that can be saved. ये मटन है ये मैं जो एक सॉन्ग गई भी हम इतना काई Well then, it a mommy say it down by that. Yeah, it's DMI. It is it. Oh, she has to leave.
कमेंट लाइक चल चुका है तो पांच दिन के सुबह आप आए Kami ini kan, kita lakukan cuma penanda mata ini. Thank you. 
ile kamera yake inachukua ile kamera yake inachukua mmm yani na record kwa youtube Mm. 
Nafanya utoa kama.
Chile, Canadá, Ojalá y otros países.
Yeah, so I think, uh, so welcome everyone. Um, are we are we ready to start? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Thank you. So I think we can can start. Okay. Okay, so I have some other things to tell you before trying to exercise by yourself. Okay. And um, Okay, so um, I tried to explain what the for loop is. Uh, intended to repeat some instructions with uh, variables that can be used to know which is the number of the index uh, in the loop. Okay. Uh, but it is uh, the for loop is much more general than this one. In fact, you may ask why I use range here. I cannot give you details about the function, but what you just have to know is that the range is just a sequence of numbers. Okay. It constructs a range, uh, a sequence of number even uh, those two parameters. And in fact, the for loop uh, can be used to uh, iterate through any kind of sequence. Okay, I tell you this morning, for example, that uh, the string can be called as a sequence of characters. And in fact, it is. So I can loop over all the characters of a given string, for example. So for loop is just to catch all the value in a sequence you, you construct here. The range construct a sequence of numbers, but you, you can use any kind of sequence you want. So for example, uh, if I take uh, something like that, okay, say, uh, Say Nairobi, okay. Nairobi is a string, but it's also a sequence of characters. So what I mean here is just I want all the characters in the sequence Nairobi. That means starting from N, then A, B, e, R, O, etc. Okay. So, so this is a general construction. We will see some other kind of sequence later, okay? A, A, N, A. The variable C pass over all the values in the order sequence of characters. This is just a sequence of number that you construct. You can construct every kind of sequence you want if needed. Um, Okay, um, this is a very uh, stupid example, I know, but uh, let's say that uh, you want to, for example, uh, compute the sum of numbers from zero to a given one. Okay, not print them, but compute the sequence. Okay, so what you can write is that everybody. To, we have to compute. Oh, I know there is a, a close form that uh, say if you want uh, um, the sum of uh, integers from zero to n is n n plus one over two. This is not the the question. I want to compute this. Suppose that I I don't have the close form. 
either it doesn't exist or I am unable to, to, to find it. How can I do this? Okay, I have to make a computation that I accumulate the sum over all the integers from uh, zero or one if you want. Okay, so you start with sum is zero and then you add one and then you add two, you accumulate, you accumulate it into the final result, into the partial result, all the integers in order to obtain the final sum. So you start with sum one, say we run from one to 10, okay? And when what we can write is something like that. Okay, uh, sorry. It may look like, like strange, okay? It is not, remember that this is an assignment. It is not a relation, okay? So this means that you compute this value, sum as a value, you compute this, and the result is stored inside sum also, okay? So at the end, you will get the finite sum, okay? Let's try something will give you just before nearby 45 okay remember that we then it's not included in this okay it's from one to ten but the, the interval is open at ten okay um you will see when you will read um python's program that this kind of instruction, okay, is an instruction. There is an assignment of an expression into a storage, okay. Uh, can be written shortly. But it is not so common to write it this way, but much more common to write it this way, okay. That means some you accumulate you accumulate i with a sum into this variable into this storage. Okay. okay if, if you if this syntax is strange for you, you can write it like that. It's <laughs> almost the same. Okay. Um, not that I put a, a strange character in the beginning of this you know, instruction. Um, it is a comment. What does this mean? It means that this line is just in your by Python. Okay. If I want to remove a line, of course, I can remove it. Really? I can delete the line. But I can also, for different reasons, just put it into a comment. Okay. When Python. Uh, uh, see uh, sharp character, then it ignores everything, including uh, this uh, sharp character up to the end of line. Okay. So remember when I created the first uh, project, there, there was a lot of comments inside. Okay, you just have to ignore this. Okay. Um, it is sometimes used to. Uh, say something about uh, what you are doing. Remember, I, I, I told you, okay, this, this comment is not very helpful, but okay. Sometimes you write complex expressions. It is not clear to how people will read it. So you can make comments to help the reader to understand what you are doing. This, this one is trivial, but uh, okay. Now, um, before trying to uh, make some exercise, um, I want to show you how to input something. Okay, I can do print to make my program output something in the console here. But uh, sometimes you need input from the user. Okay, I can. How can I do this? 
suppose that I want to ask the user for a number n and I want to compute all the, the sum of all numbers from one to this number n. Okay? But n has to be chosen by the user. So there is a function for this, which is called input. Okay? Input can take um, a message that will that is that will be print on the output okay so uh, give me a number okay please and the um, what you will get in return is what exactly the user uh, inputs okay so let's just see what it gives you print okay So you see the message is printed on the on the console, the output, and then uh, Python is waiting for input. I'm sorry, it's at the end of the. Okay, it's waiting for input. You can input anything you want. Okay, let's say. Uh, Okay, nothing interesting, but it is a stream. Okay. Okay, inputs, the function input returns me what exactly I input in the console. Okay. Then, of course, if I print it, I see what I print. I can, I can input anything I want, okay? It's not yet, it's actually a number. Yes, it is, it is just a string, okay? Exactly what I got. Input returns you a string. But it is not what I want. Remember, the user can input in a sequence of characters a string. But that string may represent a number. And I want to convert this string to a number because what is waiting in the for loop, in the range of the for loop, is numbers. I want integer. The integer value is needed. I cannot put the string. This is not what this function is waiting for. So I have to convert what is by the new user into an integer. Of course, you have to be careful because what the user type is not always the representation of the number. But okay. You can first suppose that the user types something which is correct. How can and I do this? If I know that the input uh, should be an int, then I can try to convert this value, this string value, to an int. Okay? How can I do this? Uh, say I can, I can call it n. I can do it like this. What is main int is it is the name of the type that represents integers. Int is the type of integers. Okay? So what I'm doing here is that I'm telling Python to convert a string that I suppose represents a number, an integer number, and get in return that number. Okay? Let's try. Okay. If I execute something like that, uh, okay, I missed the error. Okay, I can try to put twelve. In fact, my input is not twelve. I insist on this because it's very easy to make the confusion of this. I input one car one and car two. It's a string, okay? I catch it into P, okay? Into the variable P. I print P, okay, I see one, two, but don't be fooled. This is a string. Now I convert this string into an integer. So in N, I have the number 12. 
not characters one and two, but the number of web, the machine representation of the number of web. Okay. Of course, if I print this value, I see one and two. I see a string that plays an accounting for the output. But N and P are of different types. Okay. P is a string, N is an integer. P is the storage in which there is a string, N is a storage in which there is an integer. Okay. Now you can uh, ask, okay, if I don't input something, if I input something that, that is not an integer, say I type something bad, okay. There is no problem in printing P because it's a string, so I see bad. Okay. Then I, but when I try to convert it into an integer, it fails. PAD is not the representation of any number. There's a string of that, uh, a sequence of that. So what you what you get is an error. Python, Python tells you that this. Uh, instruction fail okay and it tells you that it is an invalid literal for it okay it is not a past 10 number okay don't be careful so uh, uh, be careful with inputs okay you could maybe add the print p uh, equal in quotes and equal in quotes so we can just use the you want to ah. Ah. Ah, yes, yes, okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. um, I, uh, I did not uh, finish. Okay, so I catch the number that the user inputted as a string. So now I just have to put this into the for loop. Then I get, okay, it's not exactly what I want because. It's exclude range excludes n, and I want the sum from one to n, included n, but range excludes the second parameter. So maybe I should just add n plus one. Okay. So now, if the user enter say one hundred, then I got. Answer five thousand and fifty, which is the sum of all numbers of all integral numbers from one to one hundred. Okay. So what the doctor told me is that okay, message are not very explicit. I don't know what I printed here. Is it P? Is it N? It's not so clear. Okay. Sometimes I would like to be much more explicit and make the explicit message. Okay, the value I compute is or oh, the sum of all numbers from one to one hundred equals to. Okay, how can I do this? This is the print. No, the print is not the. The, the trick is it is the kind of string that you can make. Remember um, that we have different kind of strings. Okay. So I can try something like this. The value, the sum of all integers from okay, let's say. One, two, mm, 
n is. You can combine pretty, excuse me, you can combine pretty by putting several arguments to the print. Okay. If you make only, if you use only one argument, that argument is printed. Is if you make a list of arguments, then each argument is written in sequence. So, for example, the result is much more clear. Okay. Say put 100. And the message that is printed is the sum of all integers from 1 to 100 is 5052. Okay. So, maybe to make it too much more clear. For example, from the input, I can have to say the input string was P and the integer conversion of the input string is. Okay. That would have been much more clear than what have been made before okay input input without you okay it's just a typo we have a lot of questions already so now we can try to you can try to exercise yourself we have uh, some exercise for you so it would be time to try by yourself. We will help you to look at your environment. If it is not functional, then we will uh, try to solve the problem you have. And um, we can help you, of course, to solve some of the problems. You will have problems. I'm pretty sure that it will be the case. Okay, um, I just need some uh, minutes to put the, 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 the worksheets on the Moodle. So, uh, is everybody already okay with the Moodle? I think you had um, um, an email in which you were invited to create an account in the Moodle for the school. Is that right? No? Everybody created his account on Moodle? Ah. Okay. Um, Jared, are you online? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, some say that, that they are waiting for the approval uh, account creation. Oh, is it? They should check, maybe. I don't see anybody left who has not okay. gotten. Okay. Okay. We, we, will see, we will see one by one. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so just give me just some uh, minutes to put the. But for the also for the physical, yeah, put it and also for the physical, those ones who are not able, I can also print some or share, whatever. Yeah, I can also print some. Yeah. Okay. Please stay online because uh, maybe I, well, I have to put it in the right section of. Yeah, you can also put the file on the chat. I think we allow, right? Okay. So let me. Uh... As we put it in the module, yes. <laughs> then we can help you. Faire comme ça. Alors attends, parce qu'en plus, il faut que je génère le nouveau tech. Mais pourquoi déjà tu ne le mets pas sous l'écran Ah oui, 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 je vais le mettre aussi, mais euh, le problème, c'est que oui. Moi, le premier exercice, c'est ça. Mmh. Oui, oui, on, on va faire ça. Je me mets, oui. Il faut que je le mette aussi sur le même plan. Qu'est-ce qu'il me fait wow. Ah, something. Ok. I don't know.
Ah non, c'est moi. C'est moi le Je règle la fréquence par moi-même. Je crois que c'est ça le problème. Hier, c'était ça le problème. Non, attends, ça c'est déjà le premier souci. L'âge d'affichage. Ah oui, bah si, si je tue, oui, tu as raison. Je vais le remettre à 30, je crois, hier, ça marchait. C'est stable, là Oui, okay. on n'a pas mettre en dessous. Alors, euh, qu'est-ce que je vais Oui, Safari, en tout cas, parce que j'ai perdu mes, mes applications. Ah, bah, Safari, il est là. Alors, le problème, c'est de retrouver historique. Qu'est-ce que c'était hier dimanche il est où le Moodle Ah, 6 heures. Ah, ouais, ça. Okay. ça c'est bon. Tac. Where I have to put it Ici. Ici. Edit mode. Ok. Et là, là je sur ce, dans la section. Dans la section ici Oui, la section programming. Ah, carrément ici Oui, je pense. Je ne sais pas d'autre. En bas, il doit avoir. Il y a le lecture aide, notes. Aide activity list. Yes. Ok, et là, il doit y avoir file. Ah. Alors, attends, parce que du coup, il faut quand même que j'édite le truc, parce que je crois qu'il y a un mode correction. Mm -hmm. Alors, euh, oui, open récente TP1. Ah, il a mis. Oh, il l'a mis à gauche. <rire> Attends. Si je ne vois pas mon curseur, j'ai perdu mon curseur. Yes, you can also. Oh. Tu l'as là Pour des online. Il y a bien. I just have to change something. OK. Je pense que c'est bon. OK. Then I have to put it on. OK. New file. Uh, W1. Set files. Uh, upload the file. Euh, yes. euh, dans le cours avec beaucoup de Kenya Tipeee euh, ben, peu importe je pense ah Save and display. Oh. Is our computer? Okay. Pourquoi il n'est pas content? Ouais, quand je l'appelle LW1. Je suis... ouais, il n'est pas content. Hein. Okay. Si je fais save, il fait quoi? Si, c'est bon? Ah, ok, ok, ok. Et donc, si je suis là, je le vois, c'est ça OK. OK, you have the first yes. worksheet on um, the Moodle in the page of... Uh, there is only one page, and you will notice that there, there's going to be three sections. The first section of topics will be Python. Then you know, maybe some yet principle for you. There will be algorithm, with the rating consuming algorithm, and then there will be saving. Oh, wow. The right section probably makes the first one, it should be visible for you. If you scroll down at the end of the document section, it just goes to the first one. Who erased? This is the 
Okay. Where? Sorry. No, it's, it's, it's okay. I think. Um, I just have to. Where is my Zoom? Oh yeah. Okay, but I lost something. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Um, okay, this is the correct thing, and I have to share. Okay. <laughs> So in the, in the Moodle page, there is something um, from the front page, which is called worksheet one. It's a file. It's the PDF file with uh, some exercise. Okay. If I click on it, okay, you have different kind of exercise with, okay, very basic things. Okay, try to print the message, try to input, try some uh, constructions with if, some construction with for, with the for loop. Okay, up to uh, included uh, exercise form is available for you this afternoon. Okay. So, yes, the idea is that you, you try, at least you try to do it a lot. Yes. In fact, you call us in the night with your stats and that. We're here for that. We are not expecting you to do it by yourself. Let's put the other exercise one. Yeah. Start. So always start with very basic things. Even if you think it is very basic and trivial, please try. Okay. I know that you have work. No. Okay. 